at, uh, at this council we... on our shared determination to eliminate people trafficking, and I reiterated the UK's commitment now and in the future to tackling migration problems upstream. We also discussed our shared security in the light of increasingly global, complex and sophisticated threats that we must tackle together. And I made clear that we must take further restrictive measures to deter cyber attacks. And I'm pleased that the Council has agreed to take this work forward. Last night, I updated my fellow leaders on the good progress that has been made in the Brexit negotiations since Salzburg, on the withdrawal agreement and on the future framework, thanks to the efforts of both negotiating teams. On the withdrawal agreement, there are a few but considerable outstanding issues in relation to the Northern Irish backstop. I'm committed to working with the Commission and EU leaders to resolve these as quickly as possible. There's a lot of hard work ahead. There will be more difficult moments as we enter the final stages of the talks, but I'm convinced that we will secure a good deal that is in the interests of the UK and of the European Union. Now, I'll take a few questions. Laura. Um, Laura Koonsberg, BBC News. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, you've been straining in the last couple of years to keep all the promises that you have made, whether to Brexiteers, to former Remainers, to Northern Ireland, or indeed to um, business. Ultimately, you are going to have to disappoint someone. Who is it going to be? Yeah. What we have done as a government is put forward a set of proposals that deliver on the vote of the British people, that, ensure that would ensure that we would uh, end free movement, end the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, end sending vast amounts of money to the European Union every year, come out of the common agricultural policy, out of the common fisheries policy, but also protect jobs and livelihoods and protect the integrity of the Union of the United Kingdom. That's a, a proposal that I believe is good for the UK, but also would be good for the European Union. Uh, Tom? Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Tom Newton Dunn from The Sun. Uh, in the last 24 hours or so, and if you don't mind me being a little blunt about this, uh, you've... Never known you'd be blunt before, Tom. Uh, <laughs> you've angered Brexiteers with the transition extension suggestion. You've angered Remainers uh, by talking about the meaningful vote uh, not being um, amendable. You appear to have disappointed EU leaders by not bringing any fresh concrete proposals to the table. And they even went for a beer without you last night. What, in your view, is going wrong? These are always going to be tough negotiations and they were always going to get tougher uh, before uh, we got to the closing stages of the negotiations. And yes, there are some uh, difficult issues that we are still working through. Uh, crucial among those is this issue about the Northern Ireland backstop and ensuring uh, that we can provide for a solution which is not the solution that was produced by the European Commission initially, which would have effectively carved Northern Ireland away from the rest of the United Kingdom. That's unacceptable to the UK government. I believe it would be unacceptable to any UK government. So on that issue, further solutions have, uh, have been put forward. But what we want to do is to work to uh, get through that so that we can actually get to the deal that I believe will be good for the British people. That's what we're working through these tough negotiations for, delivering on the vote of the British people and doing it in a way which protects jobs, protects our union, is good for the UK, but I believe will also be good for the EU as well. James. Prime Minister, with every compromise you make at these talks, the transition extension just being the latest example, doesn't it become less and less likely that this deal, that your party will ever be able to get behind this deal? Well, first of all, let me address this issue that you've raised about the potential extension, as you recall, to the, the transition or the implementation period. This is an idea that has been around uh, before. I've been asked about it in the, the pot potential for an extension in the House of Commons previously. I've always been very clear that we negotiated an implementation period with the EU, and we negotiated that that implementation period would end at the end of December 2020. What has now emerged is the idea that an option to extend the implementation period could be a further solution to this issue of the backstop in, uh, in Northern Ireland. What we are not doing, we are not standing here proposing an extension to the implementation period. 
What we are doing is working to ensure we have a solution to the backstop uh, issue in Northern Ireland that enables us to, uh, which is currently a blockage to completing the deal, that enables us to get on with completing a deal that delivers on the vote of the, vote of the British people and is good for the future of the UK. Uh, Heather, I think, is Heather? Yes, sorry, I knew I'd seen <laughs> one side. <laughs> Hello. Um, it, so, uh, EU leaders are don't, now don't have a meeting in the diary for November, European Council for November. Um, the next one scheduled is December. If that turns out to be the meeting at which a deal is done or is signed, is there still time to get it ratified in Parliament at, or alternatively, if there isn't a deal at that point, to get Whitehall ready for a no deal in March? Well... We are all con working, the, we're intensifying the, uh, the work on these issues that remain, and we're very clear. I mean, what I've had from leaders around the table uh, over the last uh, hours that I have been, uh, f since I arrived here in Brussels yesterday, is a very real sense that people want that deal to be done. And I think if you look at some of the comments that have been made, Chancellor Merkel said where there's a will, there's normally a way. Um, Jean-Claude Juncker uh, said, let's focus on the large areas of agreement and it will be done. So there's a real sense. So what we're doing is working to, uh, to ensure that we can do this deal uh, you know, within that reasonable timetable. I'm very aware of the legislative requirements we have in the House of Commons and the period of time that will take. Uh, Jason. Thank you. Jason Gross from the Daily Mail. Um, Prime Minister, the uh, Irish Europe Minister has said that you now accept, uh, you've told her that you accept that the final uh, backstop can't be time limited. Is that, is that right? And closer to home, um, Andrew Chowdhury is due to be released imminently. The security services say he's still a threat to the public. Are you happy to see him on the streets again? Well, first of all, on the uh, first point, you know, what we how, let's if I sort of take a step back and explain what the backstop is, uh, uh, what it is there intended to be there for. It's if there is a gap between the end of the implementation period, which, as I said, has um, been set at December 2020, and the introduction of the future relationship. Uh, if there is a period of, of months, and I think we would only be talking about a matter of months when there is that gap, matter of months when there is that gap, it's ensuring that there is no return to a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland during that time, because we believe that the future relationship will resolve the issue of the, the border between Northern Ireland and Ireland, and it's that future relationship we want to see in place. And indeed, nobody actually wants the backstop to have to be used. What we want is to ensure that the future relationship dealing with the issue of Northern, the Northern Irish border comes into place at the end of the implement, uh, implementation period, which, as I've said, uh, uh, we had negotiated that period through to the end of December 2020. On the question of Anjem Traudry, obviously... He's an extremist preacher. He pledged his allegiance to Daesh. He was convicted of inviting support for them. And, uh, but if and when any terrorist offender is released, well-rehearsed plans are put in place to keep the public safe. And the police, the prison, the probation service and other agencies have a range of powers available to them. They also have significant experience in dealing with such offenders. And, and this includes the setting of strict licence conditions, such as restrictions on movement and internet access, stringent curfews, um, and the breach of uh, which could result in immediate recall to prison. Uh, now, I... Can I ask if there is somebody here from Der Spiegel? Oh, thanks, Prime, Prime Minister. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a majority in the House of Commons for any kind of uh, conceivable deal. So um, what do you uh, tell your EU partners uh, to take away their fears uh, of the deal being rejected in Parliament? And the second one, if I may... Um, looking back at the negotiations so far, would you say that you have underestimated the EU's unity? And uh, if the answer is yes, uh, how will you change your approach in the final stage of the talks? Thank you. Oh, first of all, uh, and I think this will be the last question, but first of all, in relation to the unity of the 27, right at the very beginning of this process, I said we want the EU to remain strong. It is actually in the interests of the UK, as the near neighbours of the uh, Europe, 
27, what will be the 27 remaining states of the European Union, for the European Union to, uh, to remain strong. Now, you asked about the uh, question of the deal and uh, taking that deal back to Parliament. I am uh, confident that we can achieve that good deal and that when I take that deal back to Parliament, I think Members of Parliament will have... I will be asking Members of Parliament first to recall that we're delivering on a vote of the British people. We gave the British people that choice. They voted to leave the EU. We will be delivering on that vote. And I'd also ask them to think about the importance of protecting jobs and livelihoods in the UK, protecting our security uh, in the UK, and protecting the union of the United Kingdom. I think those will all be issues that the Members of Parliament will want to, will, will want to consider when they're looking at a deal. And as I say, I believe a good deal for the UK will be one that does deliver on the vote of the British people and does all those things. It protects jobs, it protects our security and protects the union of the United Kingdom. Thank you.